So to de hang on, when you're reviewing a company, you kind of really need to get dressed first. <laughs> better right <laughs> so hello and welcome back to bug realms on this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly so if that's something that interests you please consider subscribing to the channel so today's video we are reviewing the mantis den nfm enclosures so by nfm i mean his not for mantis range we'll get into the differences in just a moment but I want to give a massive thanks first to Mantis Den. They actually supplied me with their 19.5 by 20 centimeter cubed terrestrial enclosure to review today. But I liked them so much, I actually paid for some additional enclosures. So we're not just going to be looking at the 19.5 slash, we're going to call it 20 centimeter cubed for the sake of this video. It's easier to say, right? So we're not just reviewing the 20 centimeter cubed. I'm also going to review some of the ones I bought, which is the 15 centimeter cubed enclosures, which we actually have up here, and also the large terrestrial enclosures as well, which I believe is a 30 by 30 by 20, 20 by 20 by 30. I always forget which way measurements go. Just looked it up. <laughs> 29 by 29 by 20. That's your measurement for the large terrestrial. Okay, we got there in the end. So, first of all, let's compare our 15 centimeter cube from up here on the shelf from the NFM range with the normal Mantis style enclosure so you can see what the difference is. So here side by side, this one just on a little stand so that it can kind of sit a bit more flush. This is the NFM range and this is the old version of the Mantis range. Now the new version of the Mantis range are front opening just like this cube so you may want to ignore the style of door on this one this was like the the original old school version but it's pretty much the same in the fact that the mantis range ones have a mesh top which mantis really do need to molt they molt from the top upside down and the nfm range just have lovely kind of i guess they're like laser cut holes or something like that in the top because things like tarantulas and stuff they can get themselves caught up in mesh and this fabric mesh they could just eat their way through so the nfm range isn't just for tarantulas it's for a vast majority of creepy crawlies whatever fits with the size dimensions really now i want to let you know that in this mantis one here down there i forget the proper name but this is a double shield mantis now when i did my review of this particular enclosure the first mantis den review i ever did we popped this one in when he was like small and greenish in color at least i think he was trying to remember back now this is the very same mantis so this just goes to show that mantis den enclosures are successful in their design this mantis is now sub adult and has been doing very very well with me here in the realm and i think that that's probably to do with its habitat. Now I'm gonna be taking some of these bits and bobs out now that it's sub-adult so that it's got a bit more space to molt. I'm just gonna leave the main twig in the middle there, which is where it normally hangs out. But these are the ones we wanna look at today, right? Let's move this light because we're getting a lot of glare here. Okay, so I'm gonna pop this one back on the shelf and we are gonna look at all three designs for the NFM range. So first of all, let's go back to our 15 centimeter cubed. So it's got a front lock, sorry, trying to do it one-handed, that opens like so. Beautiful crystal clear acrylic. I've got some fingerprints on there. Now there's a slight squeak here. Oh, it's gone. But that will get adjusted by how tight you have these screws as well. Now that doesn't actually bother me and it doesn't do it on all of them. Like I said, if I slightly loosen this screw, it wouldn't be doing that. It's just the way I've put it together. Now, these 15 centimeter cubes are by far my favorite in the range. So why do I like it so much? Well, it is the perfect size for your grown on slings, small juveniles, and even some species of dwarf tarantula all the way through to adulthood, if they're the smaller type of dwarf. I just absolutely love the depth here for the substrate. 
this amount of depth in a 15 centimeter cube is fantastic i've seen other enclosures where it's half that height on like a 20 or 30 centimeter cube and i'm like well come on now we need substrate for the animals and this provides a really good amount as you can see here really really simple to close you just push it in flip the lock and it's done so yes i absolutely adore these now let's look at the 20 centimeter cubed Ba, 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 ba. Da, da. 20 centimeter cube next to the 15 so you can see so as i said the dimension is more like 19.5 um but we're going to call it 20 centimeter for the sake of this video again you can see the depth of substrate you can have in one of these enclosures it's great it's pretty much exactly the same as this one um again really easy door to open look see no squeak on this one push it back in lock it up bada bing bada boom you are done so let's have a look at the sides here so you've got ventilation strip ventilation strip then this whole patch of visibility for your enclosure the top you've got perfect lines of four same as you do in the smaller one there on the back you've just got pure visibility and again we go to the other side and 20 centimeters is perfect for your juveniles or again dwarf species and this is again talking about tarantulas guys you could put in scorpions in here and various other things kind of on your own discretion you know it's up to you guys to get the sizing of enclosures right for your animals but i think this is a top-notch enclosure now there isn't much more to say about this one so we're going to move on to the big one and the big one is the only one i have a, a slight kind of negative thing to say about but we're going to talk about it in depth so before we get on to this big beauty here um, i just want to add that these enclosures do come flat packed guys so you do have to build it yourself now to me that's something good it's like an accomplishment it's almost like you've built your very own enclosures but I haven't shown you the build process because I think these are really gonna hit off. You're probably gonna have lots of videos building these on YouTube, but I can recommend you two videos to check out. They'll both be in the link in my description below. Uh, one is from Kelly from Critters and Creations. She was building the 15 centimeter cube. And the other one is from Mr. Grindler's Creatures who was building this large terrestrial size. So you guys can check out their videos if you wanna see the build process for these. Also, it's a very similar build process to when I did my Mantis one. Um, so you can go check that video out too, where I built this one and it's, it's pretty similar. Now, Mantis Den also have instructions on building on their website, which is great because it saves on paper, it's saving the trees. He's not having to post it out with every order. You just simply go on the website and it's very well written. It's easy to understand. I actually did these without looking on there, but if you get stuck, it is definitely worth a look at. So what was my only negative say about the big one? Well, first of all, let's get it on the camera and I'll talk about it. So I'm a firm believer in getting the negative out of the way and talking about the positive. And I also am a firm believer in if you're gonna review something, you really put your honest opinion across. And that's what you'll get from me today, folks. Now, my only issue with these was actually to do with the size of the acrylic. Sounds weird, right? But what I mean is these support corners here on four sides with that lot of space of acrylic going in between the support corners, it does concern me that over time perhaps it might warp because acrylic is very well known over time to have that chance to warp in humid and hot conditions but i think i might have actually resolved that issue what i've done is i've applied an acrylic cement across the sides you can see the strength of this while i've put the cement in I can't bend these bits of acrylic in like they might have been able to do with the right amount of pressure beforehand and I think that that bonding agent is going to strengthen this and prevent any future warping. Now I can't promise you that that is going to be a fix nor can I even say that it's going to warp. I'm just saying that with acrylic enclosures that's always a possibility. I know that from my own. If we look over here guys, so I'm excuse the mess but I'm actually working on a few projects this was a bit of acrylic I bought now you can see how it's slightly bent over time so this acrylic thickness is actually a little thinner than Mantis Den's one um, it's a lot larger piece and it was under heavy 
amounts of um, water, moisture um, and sunlight too. So that has taken almost what six months, eight months maybe to warp slightly and has still been sufficient to me. So there's where my concern lies in the larger type enclosures. But look how beautiful it is. It is stunning, it is amazing. We've got again the four ventilations and the vents on the side and again a really really decent amount of substrate depth to be able to put into one of these. Again easy to use door, beautiful enclosure, absolutely beautiful. Now you might be thinking Sam I like this acrylic cement idea but why do I want to pay out when I'm already paying for the enclosure? Well I spent six to seven pounds on eBay for some acrylic cement guys and that would last me probably over 100 enclosures so paying that six to seven extra quid just to strengthen acrylic enclosures is worth it in my eyes and this isn't just talking about mantis down here guys this is talking about all people's acrylic enclosures get yourself the cement seal the sides it dries clear and it's perfect bonding strengthening agent now don't be put off by what I've said here because if we bring back the Mantis enclosure that I had, there has been zero warping and I've had this enclosure a long time. It's remained all of its strength. There is no bowing, no warping, absolutely anywhere in this enclosure. As you can see, I do spray it down for the Mantis to drink. So it's had water droplets, it's had sun, it's had everything, and this is still going strong. So that's why I still hold my trust in the Mantis Den products. I was just thinking of the future, thinking of the what ifs. So I don't think it's fair for me to do a full review here without designing these enclosures. Now we're not going to be rehousing anything today folks but I am going to design all three of these enclosures on the inside. We're going to kind of scape it out and make it look good and I'm going to show you how crystal clear and beautiful these enclosures will look when they're filled. You can't base everything on an empty enclosure. So let's see what I come up with. Ta-da! How about this cute little desert scene? A water dish, a hide, sand and soil substrate and a bit of decor. Uh, something a little bit more interesting right perhaps for a certain species of desert scorpion a small one or perhaps something else who knows right maybe even famed death beetle something like that so you can see excuse the light there guys let me turn that away there we go so you can see how you can see everything crystal clear through here right absolutely awesome little enclosure design if I don't say so myself again with the lid up it's still beautiful looking let's put that light back on for one last look awesome so let's move on to another design and secondly how about this little mossy masterpiece very basic just leaves moss and a little cork bark cave hide and a branch just for some vertical height something so simplistic yet that mix of greens and browns really make this enclosure stand out all it's missing is a water dish pretty cool right which leaves us one more enclosure to design Ta-da! So annoyingly I did actually run out of substrate on this one so I would normally bring that to the top but just for design's sake for you guys today I've just done a basic forest theme so we've got some sponge mushroom at the back not quite sure what that is bit of deck or some leaves bits of mossy bark and a nice big hide so we've raised substrate levels maybe even sloping at the back I think this would make a beautiful home for a select species of tarantula so there we have it guys three designs to show you today all with mantis den enclosures let's have a quick look at all three before we end this video and last but not least so there we have it guys our mantis den review absolutely top marks I think 
I'm pretty impressed with making this up spare of the moment. Literally 10 minutes at most to design a desert theme, a woodland theme and a mossy theme in all three terrestrial sizes. Now Mantis Den will be also be doing our boreal enclosures but I do not own any of them to show off yet but I will be getting some. Now at the time of recording this they're not on the website at the moment um, but they will be coming but it might be worth checking out just in case. Or you can send them a message, ask them about their arboreals if that's what you're interested in. But aside from the light glare guys you can see how crystal clear these are you can see how beautiful they are and I am certainly going to be getting more for my collection. I've got to say out of all enclosures I've owned, I've owned Exoterras, I've owned a custom aquaria, I've owned Tropical Factory, I've owned Tarantula Room and they were all fantastic enclosures but there's something special about these. There's something about these that I just admire more than any of the other designs that I currently own and that's not just because I've been given this one to review I'm giving you my honest opinion here and you'll see as over time I get more of these that I ain't fooling you these are the bomb guys beautiful crystal clear acrylic enclosures that I have strengthened with a little bit of acrylic cement fantastic absolutely fantastic so you guys let me know what you thought of these acrylic enclosures let me know what you think of the nfm range not for mantis range or even tell me what you think of the mantis range is this something that you want in your collection do you like the designs i did i want to hear all about it in the comments section below now before i go i want you guys to stay tuned for the next video it's a short video but a video I'm excited about. There is something happening here in the realm and you won't know a thing about it unless you watch my next video. So my upload days, folks, are Wednesdays and Sundays. I'm not sure which day I'm putting this particular video up, so I can't tell you when the next one is, but it's gonna be a Wednesday or a Sunday. So that's gonna be it for me. Massive thanks to Mantis Den. Remember, overall, you have to build them yourselves. Everything is supplied for you to do that, including the little Allen key needed to produce these. And it's a pretty simplistic build. The uh, instructions are on the website, as said before. Get in touch with Mantis Den if you want some of these. Put some in your basket, because these are fantastic. And I look forward to getting more of these enclosures for the realm. So, I'll see you in the next one, guys. Take care. Bye-bye. Do you guys want to see what else dwells in the realm? If so, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. My usual upload days are Wednesdays and Sundays, so I'll see you guys there. Oh, and one more thing. If you want to become a disciple of the realm and have your name shown on the screen like these lovely people, you can do so in one of two ways. You can scroll down the screen now and hit that join button next to the subscribe to be a channel member. Or alternatively, you can follow my link in the description below to my Patreon page. Both methods grant you access to my private Facebook page, where we like to discuss even more things creepy crawly. Thanks for watching guys, I'll see you in the next one. Take care, bye bye.